this is a demonstration of how to use a debugger. How many of you have ever used a debugger with an uh, integrated development environment before? Raise your hand high so I can look. Uh, a couple of you. All right, that's good. So we're going to go over a quick demonstration. We have a guest here. It's, do I use all of your name or should we just call you Paul? Paul. Paul has seven names. Five. Five. All right. Five, seven. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, but Paul's one of my graduate students. He's uh, worked on the Renaissance board. He's got it on his PC, and so it was readily available. We're going to go through, or he's going to go through a couple of basics on how to do debug. Now, one thing I should say, Paul, make sure to talk loudly because the microphone's over there. All right. Well, hey guys. So this is what I'm going to teach you first: is setting a breakpoint in your code. Uh, all you got to do is connect it up, like connect it button over here, connect it in the IDE, compile the code. And example, I want to set a breakpoint right here. Just come here, double click. This brown dot says that there is a breakpoint at that spot. Now, I've set up several other breakpoints down there, which you'll know why I did. Uh, first, I'll run this one up. Run this piece of code. By the way, all of you should have gone through all of this in the first two labs, right? So, how many of you actually used debugging in the first two labs? Just one or two of you? Okay. Okay, so what I did is reset go. The execution stopped at this point. The yellow arrow here with the yellow line, it says that it stopped right now. Now, I can either do uh, one step at a time, one, one instruction at a time, or just keep executing continuously starting from this point. Now, for one instruction at a time, what I do is the shortest way is F11. Now, the yellow line moves to the next next instruction, so that's like it ex finished executing that specific instruction. Again, next line comes into this. Now I can continue execution from here by pressing where did that go? Well, from before here? you go on, can you actually step through a couple of times? In other words, I want you to step through... Inside and step out. That's what you mean, right? Well, I want you to step through the for loop right there, and then I want you to show them memory so they can see the I increasing. Okay? Yeah. So, I uh, go here, it comes to the follow. Now I'll step a couple of times and count how many you did. Three, four, five. Now, can you show them memory? the memory out of the rules. Speak up. I usually just hover in my mouse over yeah, the variable you want that's to watch. Fine. That's fine. And that's fine. Okay. Right click and it'll bring up an option to add it to a watch. Mm -hmm. It will appear down in the. Uh, you got to right click screen. over the variable. Okay. Now here it is. Instant watch? Yes. Uh, it's, it's add watch. Instant watch just pops up a, a quick thing. And sometimes it, it will say if it's not, a, not available, and that's mainly because. Uh, the debugger dumps out of memory at watch. Anything that's uh, not currently needed in its execution path, so you kind of got to put the breakpoint uh, exactly where uh, the variable's about to be run and it's still in the debugger memory. So, should be able to should show up. It's taking a long time. Thank you. 
So, right now, notice that what happened? The value went from ADC, the value is, or the variable is ADC out dynamic, and the value was changed to zero instead of something that it wasn't. And look where it's saved. It's saved in register number th five, one of the registers of our processor. Um, and uh, it's been defined as a unsigned integer, 16 bit. And uh, the current scope, because you're in the function, I believe this is the main function, right? All right? So if we are to, uh, um, in fact, that will never change from zero, will it? Because we didn't hook up the, uh, we didn't hook the sensor up to it. But if this were uh, associated with something else, uh, maybe the potentiometer or so, we could actually uh, move it around and change it. So um, this is one way, as I said, as you're running, you could identify variables and then actually take a look at each one of these variables as you as you do it. But again, the main points that we did a uh, we set breakpoints right here. And by the way, by clicking on them again, like that one up there, that if it disappears. So that's how you set and take them away. Uh, you can run over a breakpoint once you hit it. Or you could just step through each one. And that's very valuable. Here's what you really want to look at. You want to look at the source code as you're running it, and then the variables, so that you can understand what is working, and what is being said, and what is not being said. And that's important because very often, you get to the point, you look at that value and say, oh, that's not right. I should be reading blah. And then you start looking at the rest of your code, See, you should be reading blah. <laughs> and you look at the rest of your code, and you find out that you didn't really put in the, uh, the correct uh, software somewhere. Maybe you had a single equal sign, where you meant to put a double equal sign in an if statement. So again, um, you know, that's one way to be able to look and debug your code. Is there anything else that is uh, useful we should have a look at? Yeah, we can change how the value is displayed because sometimes it's hard to understand with certain things by, I think, right click. Uh, yeah, I think if you right click on it. Yeah, radix. You can change it to, and then you you change it to yeah. decimal. In this case, it's decimal zero. And do you want me to step into a function? Yeah, step into a function. That might be interesting. Another important thing about it is, is this thing sometimes won't display local variables, so if you happen to need to debug something, you can try uh, setting, it, setting it as a global variable temporarily, and usually it's good about picking up the local variables, but for whatever the reason, sometimes it just will not pick up a local variable like the case of I up here. So I bet you probably move it out the outside. All right, so he's going to go into a, uh, a function. So he will step into... Let's go again, and it comes to the next breakpoint. That's again a function, that's an inbuilt function. So now I again step in if I want to go in here and start executing. It's a big function, so now this is another function, and if I want to step in again, I can still do that, but coming out is again a lot of problems. Just I step over that, again step over there, again step over, it goes into assembly code. And then if you say step out, it just comes out of the function from where you left. That's about it, right? One thing that's very important with respect to when you're running the debugger, keep in mind that if you're using a timer, right? A timer typically still keeps running. So there are some things that if you're using the debugger going step by step by step, it's not going to work the same in an embedded system because you're always running. It's not like a PC and everything else stops. Your it, timers keep running, uh, interrupts 
hopefully don't keep running, but uh, that's one of the problems of debugging with interrupts. So, again, debugging could be very helpful for you, but you have to make sure that you get a little bit of practice. So, for this next lab, which uh, we're going to have a demo of in a few seconds, make sure that at least you use the debuggers, you know, find your way around it, get comfortable with it. All right? Any questions? Oh, thank you very much. If you could uh, turn it off.